Sorry. Yeah, but you started shouting. Thank you. Father God, we thank you for life itself. We thank you for another opportunity, oh God, to serve you. We thank you, God, for just blessing us with such beautiful weather and just a beautiful day, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray and we remember the family in um, our sister city, uh, Sheriff Painter's family, Lord. We pray, oh God, that you will keep them, Lord, that you will provide strength for its needed. We also pray, oh God, that you will just give us the knowledge and the strength to uh, go about this meeting in a way that you would be pleased, oh God, and that the citizens will be proud, Lord. We thank you and we praise you and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Okay, I guess on the agenda today is okay. how can the traffic masters plan? Or, excuse me, talk. <laughs> or whoever wants to lead me. <laughs> one lead and one hand out. <laughs> I just saw Tom downstairs sitting, and I thought, maybe we're not having this. <laughs> he was thinking about that. He was waiting on the bus, right? Uh, thank you, Ma uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Council and uh, staff. We appreciate the opportunity to uh, come to you again. We've got a presentation on our transportation master plan. We've, we've had one with you on the CIP program development. And this, this uh, presentation is to discuss the conditions of our streets and the maintenance type programs and such on that. Um, we'll, we'll be coming to you one more time with a kind of an overview of the whole master plan for and then for final adoption. But uh, so today we have uh, Kevin Stone, a key member of the Kimberly Horn team working with us on this. They've done a really good job here. I think we've, we've learned a lot from what they've done here. And so uh, I'll turn it over to him and let him kind of walk you through some things. I appreciate that, Tom. I mean, we're just honestly happy to work with such a good group of people over here. Um, you make our jobs easier. So we appreciate everything you guys do for us and, 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 and everything there. So um, I'll give you guys my cards just in case anybody wants any contact information after this. Um, I think I got the right number here. Four and four, maybe. I'll, I'll give you one back there, too, if you like. Well, then I'll mix it with I've got I've got the contact information for New Gen to get to you. Uh, I've got that personal information. All right, so uh, without delay, um, as Tom teed up for us, um, this uh, portion of the overall master plan, um, we term system operations. So our um, pavement system, the operations and the condition of, of, our, of our pavement. Um, more traditionally termed a pavement management system. Um, the purpose uh, of which I'll get into here in a moment, but I guess the, the overall the overarching um, uh, thing to note here is that this is just one key puzzle, piece of the puzzle um, going into the transportation master plan to help determine the types of projects and rehabilitation we need to do to help keep our uh, streets operable, um, serving our traffic and operating in safe conditions. So this is purely looking at the pavement and streets from a condition standpoint. Um, and without further delay, we'll get into it. Um, so agenda, as I briefly mentioned, uh, we'll do a quick background on the project, specifically the system operations or um, pavement management piece of the puzzle. Um, pavement management, what is it? Why do we do it? How do we do it? Um, the street inventory, you know, what we have, what's, uh, what makes up our, our pavement network, what's, what's the age, different classifications, street types, things like that. Um, and all this is building into to tell us what our current pavement condition is. Um, and then from there, we can help determine uh, maintenance, rehabilitation uh, needs, what we're doing currently, what we're recommending. Um, like I'll go through a couple photos of maybe some key areas, uh, just some examples of what we saw up there, and you know, so you can kind of get a feel for, oh, I see this every day. This is kind of what we're recommending here. Um, so background and purpose. So um, overall, there's a master plan focusing on the implement implementation of projects prepare the city for the next 10 years. Um, pavement management specifically, so what it is in a nutshell, if I could sum it in one sentence, it is the practice of planning for pavement repairs and maintenance, with the goal of maximizing the value in life of a pavement network. So um, that could also be termed as not what type of, just what type of work to do, but when to do it, um, and it, you know what type and when to get the most out of our dollars and the most out of our pavement life. Um, we start by doing by doing an inventory. What do we have? Um, we determine the condition. Um, then from there we can go. How do we effectively manage and rehab our pavement? Like I said, when and how much. Um, 
previously and, and, and what a lot of cities historically have done is be um, sort of reactive um, in, a, in a sense to maintain um, when the need seems to arrive, arise and um, what this, the payment management process teaches us is that you really want to manage, you want to be proactive. Um, lower cost maintenance up front is better than high cost maintenance at the end. Um, here, this is a kind of a quick schematic as to the payment uh, management process, uh, what it looks like long term in terms of our condition on the left and our age on the bottom here. So, and I'll get into this a little bit later, but when we talk about asphalt pavement, typically designed to last about 20 years, that's the typical design life that um, it's designed for. Um, you can see here there's different levels of maintenance that you can do. Um, this is more of your low cost. Let's say you're doing a crack seal or a seal coat, something very low cost, not invasive, um, minimal interruption to traffic, um, and a lower cost out of pocket for the city. Repeat of, or repetitive maintenance like that um, in a proactive sense before the, you know, I guess to, to everybody, to an everyday person may just seem, you know, it may not need it yet, but that's when it really needs it the most. Um, so you can avoid spending more dollars later down the road. Because once you get down here and you need to start doing things like, let's say, a minor overlay, mill and overlay, or then a full depth reconstruction, you can just see how it uh, increases exponentially. These aren't specific Odessa numbers here, and I apologize if you can't read these very well, but you can see the top here, $5 per square yard. Um, if done early on, can be repeated there and kind of kept in that good range where that same, you know, to get back up to a similar point may cost $15 per square yard here, or even as much as 100 for reconstruction. Now, these are just general numbers, but it's just to show the comparative nature of the different categories of maintenance. So what the process teaches us is that to stay in this range here is going to be better on our wallet in the long run, and it's going to be better for preserving your, your pavements long term and getting the most out of the, uh, the original construction of the pavement. Um, do you guys want to kind of inter interrupt the questions periodically? Um, wait till the end. If, I guess if anybody does have any, feel free to stop me at any point in time. So Kevin, you, you said yes. that the typical asphalt is designed to last 20 years. Correct. By doing some of these kind of preventative or maintenance type activities, how much, I mean, are we just gaining the five years or, the, or what's the lengthening of the life of that road? Sure, so it, it really depends on, on, you know, it depends on a few things other than just um, your typical asphalt, but you know, traffic um, use, heavy, you know, heaviness of sure. use and things like that. But yeah, I mean, as you can see here, you know, we're, we're extending it by a few years at a time. So essentially what you're doing is you're, you know, you can do things such as reoxidize your um, asphalt in the pavement, which is gonna prevent things like cracking. Mm -hmm. So keep it in that good condition for a few years longer. And if you're going to spend something like $5 per square yard four or five times, well, it still drops in the bucket compared to 100. And let's say you could add another 10 years, 15 years if you're proactive and you're smart about the timing. Um, another reason that, which I haven't gotten into yet, it's important to continue the pavement management process, to update the system every three to five years because some pavements may deteriorate faster than others. It's good to always know, be keeping up with when and where need arises um, so yeah to give you a general number I mean it could be five could be 15 um, depending how early you're tackling it um, you know sometimes it's easy to tag to try to get or to try to provide this sort of maintenance down in this range and then it's not really quite as effective as you'd want it to be you may not see the same effect or the same um, addition of life to your pavement surface one of the things that uh, Tom has told us several times is ultimately your base wears out, right? The gravel deteriorates. That's got to play some point into that formula. Mm -hmm. Starts getting a little complex at that point. It, it sure does, and um, you know, so there's that that can get that can go into a deeper look at the types of distresses and things that we analyze here. Um, there, are, you know, there's distresses known as structural or load related which that's going to happen after repeat loading no matter what, whether, you know, even if you're doing a surface seal, a crack seal, it's going, that, that's still going to happen over time. But by doing preventive measures to, one of the big things is keeping water out, for example. So if you're crack sealing and, and doing a surface seal, um, the less water that gets underneath into the base, the less likely that's gonna happen in the near term. So, you know, you can kind of push that into a later 10, 20, 30 years down the road, as opposed to having it in five years. Um, 
you let the cracks stay open, water seeping in there, you may see those load-related distresses. And when I say load-related, we're probably all familiar with um, you know, wheel rutting, those ruts that form um, that alligator cracking. It looks like an alligator you know, skin. Um, that's going to happen over time. And the less preventive maintenance you do, the more susceptible you are to things like that. Or to get away from you, because even though you may have done maintenance on cracks, uh, you're going to start getting more and more over time. I mean, it's just not structurally going to solve your problem. Okay. And they can take it better than I can. But one of the things when you're talking about these numbers in general and things like, you know, this is, uh, we have a really great subgrade. <laughs> we, we're, we're building our roads basically on base, you know, so we're putting base on base. So the roads here, in that sense, structurally probably perform better than in some places. But we also have heavier road conditions in a lot of places here than some others. And so, you know, we have some really heavy traffic in some areas. So with this, you're primarily, or are you primarily looking at the major thoroughfares, the more heavily thoroughfares, we looked not at, we residential? Looked at every, we looked at everything. Uh, okay. We did, we did, or they did, uh, they drove all of the major roadways, and then they drove a percentage of our uh, okay. residential company. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and then another thing to Tom's point, uh, Tom's point is, uh, you know, we, we have things that play like more heavily traveled uh, areas, but we also have uh, uh, an issue of age as well. Um, you know, they can be, the base is, is great here, and it lasts for a certain amount of time, but once you start getting to those, you know, those higher ages, 30, 40, 50 years old, where the base hasn't been replaced, then there's really not much you can do at that point, um, you know, aside from a mill or a reconstruction. Eventually, you so, have to right. have to reconstruct. Right. And while, while this is the this is the mindset, this is like you know the kind of the thought process we want to get into. We do have an issue of older pavement in our inventory, which I'll get into actually. I think on the next slide, good segue. Um, well, probably the slide after this, but um, to, I'll get to that next. But I guess to elaborate on Tom's point, he just made um, the way we inspected. Um, there's a, a testing method called the ASTM. Um, it's D6433, you probably don't need to know all that, but um, what that is, is it's uh, developed originally by uh, the Army Corps of Engineers for, for rating pavement, and what it's supposed to be is a objective, um, you know, if, if two people go out there and rate the, the pavement based on the same way, this should be within a 10% tolerance of one another, um, any given day of the week, any, you know, any two people who know the system. Um, it's consistent, it's repeatable, so as you further your system and update it every three to five years, you'll see consistent data points and you'll be able to build on those and be able to see real, see real trends. What is my pavement actually doing? Um, and you know, better, even more accurately plan for the future. Um, so the way we um, determined whoever we want to inspect is we had a lot of conversations with Tom, Hal, and the rest of the staff here. And we determined, okay, okay all of our major thoroughfares, our collectors, and our minor and major arterials, we definitely want to be, look at all of those. So let's look at every single one of those and then for the local streets, there is just such a high volume of them. We decided, let's look at a representative sampling. We looked at a handful in every district, and we tried to evenly distribute it among age. So some of the newer ones and some of the older ones. So we're not just looking at you know just one type. Um, so we got a pretty good representative area that way. And if you can see here, all these little green dots, this is everywhere we looked at in the city. So we drove around. I was one of the people on foot. We had four of us driving around, taking data points, recording distresses. And um, um, yeah, and that's that's how we developed our, our system. Um, I didn't mention that the, the feedback from y'all for the the Mookie Map survey that we uh, submitted earlier on the project process that also played heavily into us deciding where to inspect, especially on those local streets. If we if there's an area we knew uh, we were having issues, um, you know, people had writability issues, saw saw things of concern, we took made sure to take a look at those to try and mitigate that. So. I know this is a silly question, but I don't know the sure. answer. What, what's the definition of arterial and collector streets? So um, me just being a, uh, a pavement guru, um, not quite as familiar with the traffic side of things. I do know that a major arterial uh, and minor arterial are more so those, those, collect, they're those connection points, those majorly traveled streets that then get you to the collector, and then from the collector you'll go to typically a residential. So the collector is less traveled than the arterial. Correct. So there's arterial split up in, in this case into two categories, major and minor. Okay. Um, 
So if you know familiar with the city, your majors would be your universities, your uh, John Ben Shepherd Parkways, uh, collectors, and if I misspeak here, correct me. You know, 31st, I think Maple Avenue, um, and then you have your, uh, your of course, your local residential streets. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so this this goes into the uh, what I was segueing to a moment ago. Um, our inventory. So our inventory, that's just our basic, our overall network, what makes up our street network, right? So um, we have things like different types of use, um, whether it's an arterial or a, a local, those are very differently used, a lot different traffic patterns, a lot different distresses you're going to see out there, a lot different conditions most likely, right? Um, we also have, um, playing into our inventory, we have our age, um, location, obviously geographically. Um, and one of the big points I wanted to note on um, is the age because like I mentioned before um, you know we do have really good base out here we have good uh, pavement design going into our streets however once you get to a certain point um, it is going to be necessary to take a little more action than just the typical localized maintenance or low-cost maintenance if you will um, so while that is a priority to try to take these younger streets that are going to be in better condition over here and make sure those stay in a high condition we also need to be allocating funds here to start to get these guys back from the bad to the good. Um, this isn't directly saying bad and good, this is just saying old versus new, but you can see here the or, you know last construction date of a lot of the, the, the pavement network is um, 50 years or older. Um, wow. And what I mean Not by that much. Wow. <laughs> and, and I, it's a little surprising, I, I know, and um, this is done based on a detailed review of all of the as-built and construction documents that the city had on hand, which was pretty extensive. Um, and then beyond that, for the streets we didn't have, uh, detailed aerial imagery, uh, historical aerial review, where we looked through tons of those old little thumbnail historical aerials to find out which one, which at what time they went from dirt to paved. Um, so that was fun. Um, but what it came up with is this, this distribution of the age here. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind here is you know, a lot of times we'll do an additional surfacing, a seal coat um, addition of aggregate and asphalt binder to the surface of a road. That's not going to define the age. The age is going to be when did, what was the last constructed with um, base and surface course, and full, reconstru full construction of that pavement. So um, a lot of these surfaces, while the, the surface you're actually, your wheels are on, may be 10 years old or less, the actual road surface down beneath is in the 40 to 50 or greater range. So. so that's a hundred dollars a square yard. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Again, that, those aren't actual numbers. That's just a representative comparison. When's the last time? When, did, when was the last time we we had a, a yard that was that was actually that was actually a master plan? Um, two thousand seven, seven, eight. At that time, we still had. <laughs> I don't know how to ask questions like that, okay? Now, wow. I'm not trying to paint a picture of, you know, of just the demise or something. I've been hitting them with the mind. Yeah, for someone not trying, you're really. I will tell you this. To me, maybe it's a little different to me because I've seen, I've seen so many different systems and networks in, in, in the past. and. This isn't anything completely out of the ordinary. You know, these things are, it's, we, we can get there, it's just, it's gonna be a process, right? It takes time, like anything else. Um, it's just, it's a matter of being smart, being strategic, and just setting intermittent goals and just trying to achieve that, you know? Do, so. you, do you have in this, or, in, or no, of this 55% that are over 50, are most of those the, the side streets? Well, so, and I don't have it here, I do have it, if I could pull my computer out, but if we, if I took this same sort of uh, graphic and I applied it to just, now this is everything, this is including all the locals, right. all the local streets, right. so all these little white ones here, so everything. Right. If we take those out of the mix and we just look at the major thoroughfares, it's a similar distribution. It is. Yeah, it is. Um, one thing to maybe you can hold on to though is the fact that the local streets, like I said, they're not getting used as heavily. So we're gonna see generally, for the older pavements, a little better condition than on the major thoroughfares. Because they're gonna age a little bit, but you're not gonna see that running. You're not gonna see that. Yeah, I was hoping those were the local streets. And, and, and those aren't gonna probably 
I don't use the word require, like it's a guarantee, but require maybe full depth reconstruction as soon as some of the other ones that are heavily used. You know, those, a lot of those are probably operating just fine in the condition they're at. There's no, there's no need to go in there and spend buku bucks to try and, and rehab those guys. But, um, but there are a lot of them, so you can... Right. There's a lot of them, and, and, and those you know those are important just to know, you know, make sure we're, if we are doing you know seal coat um, type of work and things like that, we're just in on the right streets. We don't want to do them where it's not going to have much of a benefit. Um, so that's one of the things that we're trying to identify here is where where we're going to get uh, an effect or a benefit out of uh, spending that money, right? Something I guess kind of university a couple of years ago we seal coated because we we were afraid we weren't going to get to it soon enough, and we weren't, and, and it did help us for a year or so. so. But you can see where that seal coated. You wouldn't want to do that normally. We did that because it was kind of a, just a band aid to get us past it. But if we kept doing that on all our streets with seal coat, it's a waste of money. If that happens. Sure, sure. So um, from that, I'll go to the next, which is our uh, condition. So remember this graphic I showed you at the very beginning here? Um, this is the, I'll call the payment management sort of philosophy or mindset, if you will. Um, the important thing is, is to try to just you know, make intermittent progress, try to get up to this level, you know, maybe this fair to satisfactory range in the, in the future, um, you know, as time permits. Um, this, so PCI, for those uh, who don't know, it's Pavement Condition Index. It's a number we get from the ASTM, the evaluation method we, we follow. And it's a number from uh, 0 to 100, um, 100 being the brand new pavement, 0 being completely failed. Um, this, we have a condition of 55 as our overall weighted average um, based on everything we looked at. Um, so that puts us right here into the, the low fare to high poor range. Um, again, this is not out of the ordinary. There are a lot of cities that have very similar conditions. This isn't, you know, something where most cities are in the 86 range, we're in the 55 range. So, you know, not, no doom and gloom here. Um, large networks, you know, it, it, it takes a lot to, to rehab and to, to keep up with them. So. Um, the goal is to get better, um, and you can see a distribution of the different conditions up there. Um, sort of a, you know, like you would imagine more heavily weighted in the fair to poor category here, right around the middle, um, with some in the poor range and some in the good range. Um, like I mentioned before, the locals, as well as at least what we inspected, the average there is a little higher, we're up here in the 60 range, um, while the more heavily used streets are down to more in the 55 range. Um, so what we do is we set a, a value, um, a critical PCI is a point at which once you reach this point, um, typically the lower cost maintenance is typically no longer considered beneficial for the pavement. Um, so you want to try to stay above that value and mitigate getting to that point. Um, so the pavements that are there or below there, you know, that's when we're going to start spending, like, like we show here, mill and overlays, reconstructions. When you're above that, you can still apply that minor, the seal coats, the crack seals, the localized maintenance are going to be effective there. So, you know, objectively speaking, about half above, half below. Um, it's important to keep these guys up, up here while trying to bring as many of these as we can <coughs> and then funds permit. Um, there we are currently. So, you can kind of see the typical curve, um, what, you know, a new pavement will do. It will sort of hold on to good for a while with, without any treatment. And once it gets to a certain point, this becomes a little steeper. So what you see is you see cracks that start to open up. Those start to get bigger. They start to let water in, and that leads to more distresses. So if you can mitigate that at this phase, then this steep portion will happen at a later date. You can kind of maintain yourself up here before that finally happens. It's one of the things that you also heard from the water side is that you know you have stuff that's very recent, newer, and you want to keep. It's all right, you got to spend some money on it, but or building new stuff, but also then you still have to worry about that older stuff. It's a balance, definitely a balance. So, is it fair to say that since our 54 and 53 are our arterials, that we could work with them in on this score, on this chart in the fifteen dollar square yard range because right. they're in the fifty three and four. Sure. And as an average, they're not all in the right. same. So, but yes, but generally speaking, perhaps that would be the right. amount. 
Yeah, for, for those streets. Now there are gonna be ones that are gonna be down in this range. Sure. Um, some of these are, are a condition where, you know, it's, it's low, um, and this sort of plays into our decision-making process that I'll, I'll show sort of our final, some of our final decisions later. But, you know, when we're down here, the, the thought process here is sometimes you find yourself in a range where you're approaching maybe, you know, let's say you're right here at a 52 or something, let's say. Well, you're approaching this need for, let's say, mill and overlay. Um, but technically, I'm in this range, so it's $15 still, right? Well, maybe the $15 is the best bet there. Maybe your best just to let that go, spend the $15 or something else that will see a lot of benefit from it. Let this go until it gets here if there's, if there's not a safety issue or a safety concern and, and spend the money when it becomes available. You know, does that make sense? So um, there, there's, there's a little bit of an art to it, I guess you could say, um, but this is the overall, overall process and mindset and it's just important to, like I said, it's, it's shifting that mindset from being reactive to being proactive. Um, so, as you can see, based on this condition um, rating scale here, uh, this is the exhibit which um, which we uh, delivered as our, our final PCI values based on the areas we did inspect. Um, you'll see a lot of the greens, um, a lot of the more major streets we have green where I'm sure you're aware there's been recent construction. Uh, for example, over here on, is this John Ben Shepherd and Grandview? These two structures here, I know they've been both reconstructed more recently. Um, a stretch of eighth over here near where we are now. Um, so these are the conditions as, as, as we found out in the field and overall. overall schematic. Why does Dixie not go all the way to Utah? Is that, is that in the city? It is. Dixie. No. Right here? It, 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 yeah. At some point it, it stops around 58th or so and then goes into county. Up to Utah. Yes. Up to yes. Utah. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that. All of Dixie, but it doesn't go all the way to. No, sir. Okay. That's okay. And one thing to note, too, is that when we did begin this project, it began back in, if I can remember correctly, the kickoff was end of summer, early fall last year. Um, there have been a few streets that have been annexed since then that are now in the city, which we weren't able to inspect because it happened after, you know, too far along the, the project process, if you will. Um, the North Church of Padre. Um, Judge of Murphy down there, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the fun stuff, talking money. So, this is by no means a, this is what we need to do, otherwise we're doomed, like I said. This is, uh, we, ran a, look, we ran a bunch of analysis to see what, uh, what happens to our overall PCI values, what happens to our backlog, um, if we apply certain amounts of, when we're looking here, we're not just keep in mind, we're just looking at major rehabilitation. So we're just looking at our mill and overlay and our reconstruction, for example. So our high cost capital projects. So we split up into two groups. First, we looked at arterials and collectors. So our major thoroughfares. And we said, where's our current PCI? Um, what has it been doing over the years, deterioration wise? How's it going to continue in the future? And then by assigning costs um, through diligent research of uh, historical bid information in the area um, and the areas of the streets that are present, um, how much money is going to be applied for certain or re rehabilitation types? And we have a program called Paver, which is very powerful for running this sort of analysis for large numbers of streets. It can tell you what it will do in the future if you apply X amount of money, if you choose not to. Um, what your total backlog will become if you don't spend any money versus if you only spend a little bit, and so on and so forth. So what we found here is um, our arterials and collector streets. Um, we ran different price points just to see what it would do to our, now keep in mind this is general, um, to our, system, our network over the next 10 years. Um, what I did was I highlighted a point, which it's the first of our data points, which brings us into the positive. Um, we had discussed the goal amongst ourselves of if we could get, you know, four or five points every 10 years, that's all definitely on the right track. Um, and eventually we're going to start finding ourselves, like I said, up in this fair, approaching the satisfactory range. Um, so this is looking at the arterials and collectors. Um, you can see we have a major decrease 
to our backlog. If we weren't to fund any work, our backlog would grow into the $200 million range at the end of 10 years. Um, it grows by less than half that if, if we're able to apply uh, a substantial amount to, to reconstruction. Um, so this usually raises a lot of questions, so I'll leave what, it up for a What are we here. doing now? I, if I recall, we were looking at, we need the increase on the maintenance from 2.5 to 5.2, is that correct? Yeah. 5.6 5.7, yes sir. I think that'll that'll be another slide here. I mean, this is CIP project, so this is the larger project, more like reconstruction or mill and overlay. Mm -hmm. So this is not the same as this that. This is the regular repair yeah. and maintenance we're budgeting. And so this is a really interesting chart, and then it's kind of a forecasting chart. You know, it's again, again, you're you're having to make a lot of assumptions and determinations and things like that because it, it, you can't be exact in this, but that that would indicate, I believe it's 10 million? No, uh, this, this line is 10, yeah. Right, is that if you if you wanted to appreciate or make your roads better in general, you know, about 10 million a year in capital type projects like CIP projects. Um, so if you're at 5 million a year, it would indicate based on the analysis that we would still decline in, in the rate. Um, whether that's better or worse than what we've declined in the past, I, I don't know that we've analyzed that. <clears throat> but that's what this kind of forecast. And this is for the uh, collectors and arterials and larger roadways. Correct. So, and I, I took on some notes here just because I know this, it speaks a little more sometimes than just a, a number, but um, looking at minor arterials, since that falls in the middle between our collectors and our majors, um, for every $5 million we spend, we're able to reconstruct about one and a quarter miles of streets. So. Imagine at that range, we're doing about two and a half miles a year. Um, but in perspective, I think the Grand View and John Ben Shepherd, those are both about two miles, as well as the recent uh, university project. The projects that we're doing. The one that's upcoming, I'm sorry. Um, so just to put it in uh, you know, perspective as to the things we made, made reference in recent, recent years. And, and we haven't funded it this way in the past, from my understanding. So when you look at this, say we did a bond here recently, and the so the city would bond money as it found it really necessary to grab something. <coughs> You'll add it to a million dollars a mile and no longer applies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two miles of, uh, of uh, university is 7.5 million a mile, was it? No, 13.9, seven million for construction. So this is normal for most municipalities? Normal, I mean, I don't want to commit too much to, to an answer there, but I mean, it's, it's not out of the ordinary, I guess I'll say. Whether cities are, are funding to that degree, I Correct. guess, would be a question. Um, do you know if cities look like they're able to fund these levels? Some, some are, some are, um, and you know, I mean, I, I will say, yeah, generally the ones that are funding uh, closer to this level. And now this is relative to size, obviously, but this level is relative to their size. Um, we are seeing PCIs closer typically to the 60 to 70 and above range, more of an average, especially if they've been doing it year over year. Um, it really just depends on the amount of time they've been putting um, you know, the attention to their street network. What I've seen those. It, it's a, it is a balance, especially for y'all in terms of having it find how we, we need to achieve those funds. But then also if if we don't attempt to get somewhere, obviously then we'll eventually that, that cost when you really have to reconstruct like university, it, it escalates. It becomes a lot mm -hmm. more. And you're right, Tom, for most cities I would say this is the balance, right? Because there's hundreds of millions of dollars oh, that are needs and you only have so much money so you've really got to uh, determine what's the best use of your resources. Right. So and uh, we're just talking about it. What has been done in these in this past years on to try to address some of these maintenance issues? On a routine basis, it's basically our seal coat and crack seal, the uh, minor maintenance type projects. But I mean, I mean, budget wise, 
Oh, what has been provided? I mean, has that been increased? Has has it been increased in these past few years? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But not significantly, but it has been increased. And then any reconstruction that you currently see is typically a result of the bond issuance that we. It's not in the bank. That's why they just had bonds so often when it gets so bad. So part of instead of instead of. I mean, instead of funding this $9.9 million a year, if we we waited till 2030, it would be a $197 million bond. Is that a fair statement? If, if you want to tackle everything at once, yes. Well, yeah. Right. But I, in, I mean, in yes, terms, in terms of, of relation. Yeah. 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 Oh. I, I will say to, to further answer um, your question, too, it's, it's not, it is extremely common to see the needs far outweigh What's, what's achievable? That's that's why it's important to be to be smart and to to apply um, you know your efforts where they're most effective. Um, you know you could spend, for example, we could spend the same amount every year um, without much rhyme or reason to what we're applying yet. Should I close? Thank you. Bet the kids are here too. <laughs> um, you know, spending the same amount year over year, you know, we could see, honestly, a little, a little improvement if we were just to able to better allocate those funds, right? You know, right. more, more planned usually. From a more educational standpoint, right? Not, not much, but some, of course. But when you look at like uh, right now, you see uh, Alaska you Drive University between the Loop and Andrews Highway. That's not the portion that we're rebuilding right now, but if you'll drive, especially the interior lanes, to me seem more evident. But all of it. There, but drive it and, and kind of watch the road surface. All right, over here. Keep watching for traffic. Yeah, yeah. keep watching for traffic. But kind <laughs> that, of watch the road surface. Yeah. You'll see uh, um, it's starting to decay, and 56th Street especially. Go up to JBS and drive 56th Street. Go both directions. But uh, you, you will definitely 56? see. 56. 56. This is a problem I have ever since we annexed 56. <laughs> <laughs> but both of those have increased traffic, not only with you know the university as well as the schools there. Yes, sir. And you got Compass and you got um, um, the STEM. Yes, sir. And that, so all that happening, but as we see, we're going to start. My interpretation is that we're getting to the age in time that we're going to start seeing more of them pile on. And so we, we are requesting that we look for funds to see if we can do better. But that's, uh, it's not an easy task, and I'm not thinking that you can, sure. should be able to just do it. One, one question is, is, that, is there anything different that we can do with the developers when they, when they put in their streets outside of number of lanes? I mean, is there a different type of? Street that they can that we can get. You mean in terms of the the standard for the yes. road construction? Yes. I, I, we we they typically follow the standard on the road, on the city road. But I mean, yeah. is there anything different you can do now that we have increased traffic? Do you think, or the, you would the, recommend? There there are things now. We are having a part of this study is to give us some recommendations on on what we have and how it looks and how it's performing. I would say in general, our street design with the subgrade that we have. I think it's a pretty so solid design. But yes, if you want to get into uh, some of the major streets or the intersections, um, you can go as far as concrete. Um, like we are looking to put concrete in major intersections. Because all that turning and everything is really rough on paper. Um, but concrete is significantly more expensive than asphalt. Uh, the, only thing I have, the only thing I would add to that, Tom, is that when we look at some of these roads, especially in these newer development areas, we really need to think of, about not just within the next five years, but the next 15, 20 years. Right. So where a two lane may work, you really gotta think about what is that road, what is that area, where will a development happen, and whether or not we need to be doing a five or a, or a seven lane road as now, as opposed to having to wait to do it later. Which, um, kind of in a residential, that would not No, 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 I'm talking you're about. You're talking about around. Kind of the major roads, maybe. The major roads. Well, you know, it seems so daunting because what you're saying is that if we adopted the $5 million a year, we could only do one and a half miles of road. 
Now, Am I understanding that right? right? Uh, we're we're kind of mixing apples and oranges here, I think. What, 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 what he's talking about here, these are the major roadways, uh -huh. and these are reconstruction, basically, or mill and overlay. So the 5.66 million, that's the seal coat programs, the crack seal, and that type of program. That's the lesser program yes. of mm -hmm. doing less. That's, and right now, last year our budget, the previous year our budget was 1.7 million. Right. Last year we asked for an increase of 700,000 and council was very good to us and we're at 2.4 million now. But in this analysis, we came up, it looks like 5.66 million would be a good number for us. Now whether that, that can happen or not, that's uh, you know what y'all have, have to wrestle with. But this number is a separate number. But, but yeah, I see that. But when he said five million dollars does a million and a half, I mean one and a half miles of road, is that new construction or is that doing this this major hundred dollar? Well, that reconstruction yeah. on uh, actually the ladder. It's, the it's doing the hundred dollars. That's like that's just, something. That's just to give a, a, a reference point. If we're going to do a full depth of re, full reconstruction, the entire road section all the way down to the, the bottom. Um, and that's on a minor arterial, for example, we're in the middle of the road between collector and major arterial. Now, if, if we were to do, let's say, a mail and overlay, we'd get over five miles of the same street, just because of the cost difference, right? So this is just to give a ballpark, just, right, but you, just but every, every piece of work doesn't need to be that. And that's where you have to look at the different specific right. street, because if you do a mill and overlay on a street that's already failing on base, you've just wasted a lot of money. Yeah. So yeah. We're talking about I'll, show you, I'll show an example of that here, actually. We were talking about that on going west, or excuse me, going east on the university, correct? Yes, sir. Where we're stopping on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, going further east. Well, uh, no, I think we're probably looking close to having reconstruction on that. I think that's the way we, we priced it in the plan. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, let me ask you this, and I, man, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. you know, we're well, we're going to have to bite the bullet on some of this, and I don't even know how. Anyway, okay, the problems that we've had getting the existing part of the university done, mm -hmm. I mean, that may be... That was that. like an elephant given birth. <laughs> right. On that. Are we looking at that? You're going to give birth to an elephant, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did, are we looking at that, those same kinds of problems to do this major work? That, yes. Which makes well, it no, more I'm expensive. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. We don't have property. We don't have Let me explain. The, the, the biggest problems yeah. we had with the university as a the part we're reconstructing now is the right-of-way was confined. And so right. we didn't have an appropriate amount of right-of-way. So we did have to buy some properties, and right. still we're squeezing a five-lane road in a very narrow right-of-way. Right. And optimally, we would have, you would like to have a seven-lane section there because it's seven-lane on the east and it's seven-lane on the west. And so you would like for that to be a seven. But a seven-lane was gonna cost substantially more money. We would have had to buy a lot of houses. And we would have, so, the right-of-way is a real key item for us, something that we try to work on with developments. When the developments are coming in, it's not something that we like to do, but we really need to make sure that we have enough right-of-way for the long term, like Michael right. was talking about. And sometimes when you build a three-lane road and then expand it to a five later, again, your use of money may not have been the best. Mm -hmm. Let's say you can use that three-lane for 20 years, then maybe it's not so bad. Or, or 30 years, but if you are going to need to expand that in 10 years, you really would have been better off in money to have built the five. Sure. And well, and really, what I meant was, you know, like just the paving of university. Right. You know, we've we've got a company now, sort of, <laughs> and within the next year, they may get started. Right. Right. Yeah. I think the limitation on, on bidders was there was a lot of other work happening around. Right. That's but area. I mean, but, but we're, are we not going to run into some we of the are. same? Very much so. So we'll Very set aside so. this money. It may grow. Peggy will find a place to put it, and it's going to grow. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. and the cost to do it is going to grow. grow. <laughs> that's, that's part of that 50% uh, figure that we talk about is because that's what we're seeing is that it's that much more for us to get a contractor than we used to right. do. 
And uh, yeah, TechStop passed down a lot of funds last year and put out a lot of projects at the same time as we're trying to get a project. And we're hoping TechStop passes down a whole lot more funds, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, but well, yeah. but no, you're right. Mm -hmm. Many, 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 many. Next. So, so, so yeah, these numbers, these, these different projections here, these are all different types of work. It's not all just reconstruction. It's not all just local. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a mix of, you know, a mill and overlay reconstruction in this case. So mill and overlay much less costly, obviously, but you can't do it everywhere. And I'll show a really good example of, of where that's, um, you know, seen actually out here um, where we maybe, maybe could have applied something else. Um, Kevin, we've got about 15 minutes. Thanks. Um, I'll, I'll go over this a, maybe a little more quickly because like, like I mentioned before, um, this is what we're looking at here is we're looking at pavement period for the, the needs purely from a condition standpoint when we're applying it to this critical PCI methodology. So anything under here, according to the program, needs major reconstruction. Um, now, we, like we said, for our local streets, they may not all need it. They may have a low PCI value. Um, that may be due to surface cracking and things like that, which may not be of a huge concern. Maybe it's not heavily traveled, and maybe it's deteriorating at a much lower rate. So we're looking at our local street network. It's a lot more vast network than our arterials. There's a lot more miles of street there. Um, so these, I don't want these numbers to be daunting. You think, well, man, we need to spend that now. We need to spend, you know, X amount more on, on our locals. This is just from, you know, like I said, the distribution of the pavement conditions applied over the entire area. So it's also extrapolated. We didn't look at every single local street. We walked, you know, a small percentage of them, and then we assumed that same condition over the whole area. So, you know, this is to be taken sort of with a grain of salt, but just to present, you know, that same condition, that same methodology and mindset applied to the locals. Um, okay. Where does that put us? And this is still not the budget. No, no this is, this is still, capital. Sure. <laughs> this is still ma major, this is a major one. So, so this may not have as much of an impact as you know the streets where we we, we see us spending more on our major capital projects. Probably not. You know, there's a handful you know where down some downtown sections of streets and neighborhoods like that where we're going to be doing some some reconstruction. But um, this isn't going to apply over the whole um, citywide network like like the arterial numbers would. Um, if, you, if, if if nobody has any questions here, I'd like to go to a couple example photos and sort of show some examples of how this conditions and the um, maintenance sort of tie together and, and, and what, what kind of means what you're seeing out there. Um, oh, so the, all, all this analysis um, ran through from, from a condition perspective and based on the size, the scale, the cost, um, what we thought as being sort of reasonable, um, sticking under that maybe say 10, years, $10 million a year uh, mark or less. Um, we identified a few stretches of projects that, um, from a condition standpoint, were of a higher need, um, or of a higher need as identified by you know talking with the city staff. Um, so this this is our recommendation that again played into the overall transportation master plan, where uh, Jeff Whitaker, who you may have met two weeks ago at the other presentation, took into account things like future traffic plans, um, current you know current volume, future volume, and things like that and sort of took this consideration, threw it into the pot with everything else to come out with um, our overall CIP recommendations. So um, I believe these program years are according to his plan, um, but from a payment perspective, these are a uh, handful of projects I got thrown in into our overall um, analysis. Um, this is a summary of, from, uh, from an overall systems operations standpoint, um, our current maintenance, um, we have signal and operations in there, or maintenance and operations in there too. Um, what we have is, and we ran a similar analysis as you saw with the other graphs, which I didn't go into the same detail here just for time's sake, but showing what we currently spend and have been spending on our local and collectors um, based on our analysis of the current. Now, <coughs> we look at, for this, we look at actual distresses and we say what types of distresses and what can we actually treat at a localized level. And we came up with some more elements <coughs> the need per year to handle these sort of needs from a maintenance standpoint. So this is back to that 2.4 million maintenance budget that we've had over year over year. Um, and then projecting out what our needs identify um, for
for each set of streets totaling to about five million plus the uh, six hundred thousand for the that, and that was due to the number wasn't it how more so than or is it is it associated with cost also the uh, traffic problem? It's the it's the number but the it, for example um, I, I have at every signalized intersection 130 intersections. I have a signal cabinet out there, um, and I, I need to be replacing signal cabinets just to keep up with their useful life. I'm falling behind on that that aspect, so it's just more to maintain. So this, this should allow us to keep those those green streets green, if you will. Um, <coughs> this is the number that we talked about before. This is, yeah, this is an yes, annual sir. budget kind of number. Mm -hmm. I believe this this may or may not have been in Jeff's presentation too. It was. Um, so with that being said, I wanted to show a couple examples. Um, this is back to those projects we had recommended. We had uh, shown in that table. Um, here's some photos of kind of what we see, why we made recommendations. Um, quick overview. Uh, this is East University, uh, Grand View to Tanglewood. Um, it's major arterial street, uh, PCI value in the very poor, 34. Um, SCI, that's a st structural condition index. It's like PCI, but all it looks at is things like this alligator cracking and net running, right? So it only looks at the structural issues. So a low SCI means it's, it's at a location where mill and overlay would not be recommended, for example, where you're not going to get any value from your money. You're going to probably see the same issues pop up to the surface shortly after afterwards. So um, let me just step four. That's been a construction date, 1963, based on aerial imagery. So it may be in the ballpark. Um, what we see here, multiple uh, seal coats. So the seal coat that we've been using is multiple layers of that. And you see the asphalt binder sort of coming to the surface on the wheel paths there. What, that's, what that does is it creates sort of a, a surface where water can sort of sit. Um, it can create sort of a not as much of a rough or friction and type of surface. Um, hydroplane could be an issue. Um, and then the alligator cracking and running, of course, which you, can, you can't really see the running as well, but you can see that pattern we talked about. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Um, so this is just an example, like we discussed before, of where full depth reconstruction would be recommended. Um, the mill and overlay probably would be able to mitigate the issues we're seeing here. Um, uh, this is South Dixie Boulevard, very similar. Um, I, get, I chose this because it's a really good photo of that. Alligator cracking I talked about, you can see it looks just like the back of an alligator. Um, that takes place over time after repeated loading, um, some either, either excessive loading or just repeated over, over the years. Um, similarly, um, an area where mill and overlay may not be the best course of action, um, but a full depth reconstruction would do a solve the issue. Is that the area that floods quite a bit, or is that just leading to where the draw is? This is down south of uh, this is south, south of the interstate. South of the interstate. fire yeah. train. That yeah. does flood a lot. Yep. It does. It's yep. like a Substantial. little Monahan's draw. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, this is uh, West Murphy Street. So uh, it has poor condition. You can see the, the PCI and SCI values there. But we're looking at 43 or 34 here, PCI here, we're looking at 54. So still in the poor category, but not as bad. Um, we're seeing some localized areas of that sort of cracking, right? So areas like this where we have localized alligator cracking and rutting, that can usually be mitigated through like, say, localized patching or that full depth reconstruction in you know, focused areas. So we're not spending as much money, not, not wasting our funds. And then a mill and overlay on everything else um, typically helps. Um, solve the other issues. How oh, effective is the patching? How long does it hold? The patching? Yes. Uh, it depends on the quality of the patch. Not to not to avoid that. Yeah. Uh, but you're talking answer, about but. a full reconstruction type patch, in which you actually went in, you cut in about say 100 feet of, of mm -hmm. roadway, took the whole roadway out and reconstructed it. That should be pretty effective. That's base right. and everything. Basically, when you talk different. about the patch we do out in the street for smaller holes, like to do normal maintenance. Right. Um, yeah. That uh, that still again kind of depends on why the why it's failing. You know, if the base beyond the, where you're repairing it got wet and continues to degrade, then your patch may not last very long. If you did a really good clean patch and got it in there, 
than it could last year. So they're, they're 35, 35 years. So 35 years? Three to five. Three to five. That's how everything happens. Is the single coat, is that in the preventive maintenance or the minor rehab? When you're talking about seal coat. Preventive maintenance. Preventive maintenance mostly. So the minor rehab, the, the mill and overlay is the $30. What's in the 15? When you tell us that, what is that? 15, you might have a lighter, or just an overlay. A thin, thin overlay, a very, yeah, very thin resurfacing. Um, it wouldn't reset the PCI value to 100. It wouldn't be considered a new construction, um, a new surface, if you will. Um, but it would help mitigate a lot of, that's usually really good for surfaces. Let's say you have a lot of graveling, a lot of the surface is sort of you know, degrading, because you don't have a lot of structural issues or cracks opening up, things like that. It's just it applies a nice new smooth surface. Um, better for you know applying new friction to the surface. Um, and then one of the examples we kind of talked about this before. I wanted to show an example of where you know I mentioned a mill and overlay not being properly preferable at an area like this um, or an area like this. If we don't patch this area here, we're probably going to see this in the future. So I'll show an example and hope this doesn't hurt anyone's feelings, but we have talked about it in a meeting we had, um, which we actually didn't see the issue when we first inspected in September, but we revisited it in February after our meeting because it was brought to our attention. Um, this is 31st Street. Um, I can't remember the exact location here, but this is an exact location we inspected, so a, about a 100 foot long stretch of street that we inspected. And you'll see here, this is the photo we took of this lane right here in September of last year, um, when the mill and overlay that was performed was about a year old, I guess you could say. Um, and then in um, February the following year, so five months later, this is what it looked like. It's an example where a mill and overlay over a face that was not in good shape. So, so our report shows a, a PCI of 95, which is almost perfect. And um, no, no, no recommendations for for rehab. Um, and then it was brought to our attention to go go look at it. And I almost called the, the guy I work with and yelled at him and said, "How did you not see this?" <laughs> and he showed me the photos. He said, "I didn't see it." And sure enough, this is the this is the difference. So it just shows you know spending you know when we're we're, we're spending money on our streets, it, it's, it's a sort of large scale spending. Um, we want to make sure we're getting the most out of our dollars, so we're not wasting it essentially. So, um, a good payment management system in place to help decide when and where to apply these sort of um, efforts uh, can be really important in the long run or even in the short term, as we can see here. So, so it's our job to try and avoid that, and it's our job to uh, uh, try and not to get into the situation such as university. One of the things is university is of such a bad nature where we're rebuilding it right now that you know you would say okay our bids came in too high or we couldn't get bids let's wait a couple of years right you would if you wrote a hold up for a couple of years you'd hold off maybe see if the economy slowed down and you could get some better pricing but that road's just in such bad condition there's no way we could wait is there a, you know a lot of cities build their roads out of concrete sure uh, and so that's probably because there's a longer life attribute to that but there's also a significant cost. Yes. But when you look at what that life, that additional life is worth, does it does that balance out versus the asphalt road? The analysis that I normally see, and he, he may have better information than I do, is that yes, concrete over the lifespan is, is comparable to asphalt or better. Uh, the problem is the upfront, is yes. being able to afford right. it upfront. And it's kind of the same thing here, which it's not y'all's fault, it's not anybody's specific fault, but the same thing here, you know, if we can't afford to put the money in up front and we are at a certain level, we dabble along, eventually something's come up to us. But yes, sir, I think, uh, I think concrete, at least that's my, my, what I've seen is the analysis. Yeah, and I've seen the same thing, and, and, and we'll, you know, even we do the same thing on airports, for example, and we'll see the same thing there. Um, over the life cycle, it's a similar cost. One of the benefits to it, uh, when downsides is the upfront cost, one of the benefits could be looked at as less interruptions to traffic. So you're not gonna have to do it as often, but when sure. you do, it's gonna be more costly. Sure. So would you use the 
combination of doing concrete intersections and then paving going out, or is it all concrete? Or well, ago yeah, you said concrete intersections. I think that's you know that's 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 going to be at the city's discretion. I think, but um, I think for yeah for more heavily traveled areas, it's yeah. definitely not a bad. But you yeah, can you can do the concrete and then have paving come oh, into the concrete. And and yes, and again, it comes down to availability of funds versus what you can do. So, right. like university, we are putting in concrete intersections at uh, Dixie. Um, no water. Through the low water. Through the low water area on Muskie and the Tommy. 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 There are several intersections that will be concrete. Um, and then, uh, so you do that. If you can afford the concrete street, you know, you might try to do the concrete street, especially more heavily loaded roadways. You, you certainly don't, I don't know that it's affordable for <coughs> residential. But uh, there are cities that, that do that. Um, but it's not easily achieved. And we're, and we're, helping a small amount to alleviate this by the ordinances now that doesn't allow the big trucks to drive in it. But yes, right? yes, I mean, very much so. That's going to help us. Kevin, yes. thank you. Unfortunately, uh, we're uh, over time. Uh, 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 we had to pay you. Appreciate the presentation very much. I appreciate you guys thank and you. your audience. Here.